great jelly plating. I still have to do the other side of, of All right, those of you watching on YouTube, this is a recording of a live stream, and I'm talking to real people in the chat. Let me pop out my chat for those of you there. Hi, Terry. I'm also going to check and see if links are on. Nope. Turn links on. I'll let everybody get over from jeans. Hi, Margaret. I hate when it does that. I started the recording, so we're good on that. Let me put my phone on the charger so it can charge if we need it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to work on one of my projects for the across the decade. So I've done my research for the 1900s and in doing my research I was reading about uh, Pablo Picasso and Cubism and Henry Matisse and Fauvism or Fauvism. I'm not sure how they pronounce it. Um, let me show you kind of, let me pull up some images so you can kind of get an idea. This is what Fauvism is. It starts out using the natural colors for the artwork, but then they go in with really bright colors. And Matisse was one of the ones that did this. And Picasso was doing Cubism, and so that was actually the birth of um, modern art. So what I'm going to do is I have um, a sketch that I have of a friend's dog, and I've already done a realistic painting of it using um, acrylics and colored pencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dog, and I'm going to do it with watercolors, in the bright colors. So, hi to all of those who just came in. Christy, Dorothy, Eileen, Deb, Carrie, Jessica, Jennifer, Christy, Barb, Army Mom, Karen, Susan, Laura, Mindy, Pam, Pat, Tam, Taps, Vicky S. Welcome. And Blue Moth. I think this might be your first time. I don't know your, your name besides Blue Moth. Welcome. All right, so I'm going to, I pulled out the Zig Clean Color markers and I pulled out some yellow, orange, red, green, blue, purple. I'm kind of sticking with pretty much a primary palette, but I also pulled out some watercolors from the tube. So what I'm going to do is it says to start with like a normal tone. So I'm just going to give them and he's just uh, drawn on here with graphite. I had done my drawing with tissue paper. 
and then I put graphite and traced my drawing, the outlines. So he's on there with graphite. Um, and then I decided it was too small for what I was doing uh, for the Christmas gift. So I'm just going to take a little bit of water. And I am going to... I don't like to take the markers direct to the paper. So what I'm going to do off screen is I use a transparency. You can see where I was working the other night. There's still some watercolor left. <laughs> Eileen, it's been a long time, hasn't it? And I figured what we'll do is we'll get... Put some water in this palette. We'll also get a, a blind three challenge done. This is not watercolor paper. But I'm just starting and I'm going to put it everywhere with the it's a raw sienna. And I'm just going to completely and this is what I'm considering my natural tone to be. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in and do shading with the other colors. And I'm going to kind of work on both ends of the spectrum, I think. Ugh. I went off the paper right there. I think that'll be okay once I put the background in anyway. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to dry it real quick with the heat gun. The one ninety nine one. That was Bob. We're ordering um, the Ring dot com app for the door because we're having a bunch of Matisse probably did it with oil. I don't think he used watercolors. I'm just choosing to use watercolor. You could do it with any medium, but I'm pretty sure he. Um, well, I know they didn't use acrylic because they didn't have acrylics probably back then. I'm sure he was using oil. I'm going to start with the, and this, I think this was where I may start with the markers. I'm going to start with the purple and the, the blues. I think I want to start with some of the darker colors and put in some of my shadows and work a little backwards. But like he did a portrait of his wife who was all, she was kind of a golden color and she's all these bright colors around, but she's got this green stripe down like between her eyes in the middle of the nose. I didn't realize it was his wife. I thought it was a man. It wasn't really very flattering. A lot of his work was um, his wife. So, in this ear is real dark. So I'm going to come in and lay some of the darker colors. In here.
And I think I'm going to use two brushes and I'm going to get one just kind of damp just to kind of blend with a little. And I'm also going to um, blot. Then we won't have to turn on the heat gun and stuff as much. This is one I might even want to use the, I may come back with the full strength of the markers to get some of the brightness. But right now I just want it to lay in some of the shadows. And I've always seen art like this, you know, really bright colors, but I've never really seen that terminology or that name. I'm, cubism I was familiar with. Oh, so just switch dogs there for a minute. I'm just using some of the the colors that are still left on the brush. Okay. Let's switch to, I'm going to go straight to the marker and really try to add some intensity. And I'm going to use the purple where I have the darkest area that I want. And I'm going to soften this with the, a damp brush down here. I think I'll add the dark blue now in some places. Like I said, he's going to be not your typical color. If we don't like it, it's not, it's just, I'm just playing around trying to get the idea of what they were doing. Like I said, they were using oils. I 
think I'm going to take this lighter blue and just sort of use the brush. Now I think you can um, do this in some of those apps that are popular right now with your phone where you take a regular photograph and I'm sure there are some choices that would give you a similar Okay, so let's let me clean my brushes. And I think I need to come in. God, I think I wanna go I don't want to go to the marker to the I think I'm gonna come in with the blue right here and start doing sort of the shadows he's got shadows under his eyes and then I'm going to take the other brush just with water and try to soften that and It's not going to be real realistic. Okay, and I'm getting, notice I'm getting some greens, which is okay, because that's the next color I'm going to go to. I'm using the Zig Clean Color Watercolor Brushes. The same ones that you got, Laura, for Christmas. Do you got a set of 30, I think, or 36? So these are the, yeah, the zig, but I don't like to use them direct to paper all the time. I like to rub them on the transparency because I think I get more control. And I can blend the colors. I find if I take it straight to the paper, it's very hard to blend out. So like I'm just taking these two greens. I'm going to add a little more intensity around the eyes again. It reminds me of those thermal photos. This is just a piece a scrapbook paper. It is not watercolor paper, but I'm not getting it real wet. I'm using just a very light touch of water. And I'm just going to go add some green where we had those blues.
and I just want to kind of soften it in places so there's not a harsh line. Okay. Alright, I'm going to clean my brushes. Actually, I'm going to come back and add just a little bit more intense green in a couple places. kind of blend that. Let me, I'm going to turn this. I'm trying to trying to pull some of that marker. Come back here and get a little bit of an intense green on the back of the head where the goes from the blue to the purple. And I think that these lines these little folds. So I'm going to get rid of the green oh, and the blue and the purples. I am going to add just, just a tad bit of a green. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my warm colors. Well, like I said, I just, uh, this is a number 12 round, and this is a number 6. And I really like the number 12. 10 or 12. Um, this is a Crafts Etc., but it's been a good brush. This is a Princeton. But this is a number 12 round. And a 10 or a 12 round is what they a lot of times recommend. I have a... Well, I have... This is a 7, but it, it's a Princeton also. But it's not, these are older, so they've lost their points. And this is, uh, I think, a five or a four. Yeah, this is a five. And I don't actually like the water. I don't use these a whole lot. And I don't, I use a big flat. I don't use my flats very often, to be honest. And like I said, these need to be replaced. So I bought two the other day. They had them 50% off. I got a rigger, which I don't know what I did with it, that I really liked. Okay. Oh, here it is. The other day I got a Princeton rigger and the number six. And I really like this rigger can see. In fact, I'm probably going to go back and get a couple more of those. 
It's kept, it's a crafts, etc. So it probably came from Joanne's, I'm guessing. But I also, well, yeah, I use my big flat for when I do big washes. Uh, because it's a, lo a longer, I don't know why they call it a rigger. But that's what this is called, is a rigger. A script liner is another term. All right, so I'm going to switch to I think I want the yellow and I think I'm going to switch to the orange and some reds. I'm going to start with some of the orange and I'm going to lay those in and I'll say I'm using the markers more than I am the tubes right now that I took out. I'm going to put these where the kind of where the brightest like where I want the highlights it's going to be the orange. And I'm going to go ahead and let some of that almost bleed into that green. And you can see that most of my original color isn't really going to show. Okay, let's try a little brighter red. Ooh, that's too, that's too pink. I had a carmine. That's too pink. That's too, way too pink. get rid of that no no um, I think that's too pink too let me get a piece of well it's redder I think I'm gonna go to the tube and see how that it's about the same. Okay. Let me add some more water to that and just kind of dilute it down a little. This is a scarlet red. Let's try that.
Okay, then I'm going to come back with just a brush with water and no, no paint, actually, no pigment. And I think if I did it again, I wouldn't put blue on this other side. So far, I'm kind of pleased. You know, I think I'm pleased with it enough. I mean, it's not what I would do on a normal basis. And I think I'm going to try something. I have nothing to lose. This arm is where I don't like the blue. So I'm going to, this is just a white paint pen. I'm going to try laying in the white. And I'll let that dry, and then I think I'll hit it with the red in just a minute. Let me turn that off. Okay, and I'm going to use the black paint pen. Which is almost gone. To start his eyes. I need to fill it up, but you know how the filling up the pins has gone lately has not been a good thing. Okay, I'm going to let that I'm just going to give him that black for his nose there. Let that dry. I think this is dry enough. And then I'm going to try to hit this with that red. I think I'm going to go straight to the red marker though. I don't want the wine red. That's a no-no. What kind of tape? I don't have duct tape. Any kind of tape. What are you taping, Bob? Some, some glass. I have clear tape. I have painter's tape. 
just a minute, sorry. Okay, I think I like him. He needs a little white highlight for his eye. He needs a little bit of black outline. Bye, Pat. See you later. All right. So this is dry enough. I'm going to put a little highlight. I'm just going to use the white acrylic. And I'm going to put just a little white highlight on each eye. All right. These are my mark markers that leak. So what I've been doing is, if I keep watching it, if I keep like pulling off the extra, I can use them kind of quick. But I have to really watch the flow of the ink or I'll have that big blob. See? I'm hoping that eventually the excess ink will be gone from my failed attempt to fill them up. other paw hanging out here And then we need to give him a background, but I'm not sure what I want to put. Okay. Oh, see, I just barely flicked the marker and look what blob just landed over on the plastic. That was really close. Okay, let's sign it real quick. We put this marker away before we have a disaster. I thought about taking the bottom off those markers and um, seeing if I could tap out or dump. This was the bottom of his foot um, in the picture. But he needs, like, maybe some nails, is what you're saying. Yeah, let me go back to the picture. He needs probably black tips, but we want to use a different marker than that one. Let's try the black brush. Oh, 
See, that one came out a big puddle. Well, if we only get one, I'll uh, see that's All right, let me put the lid on this and I'm trying to soak up some of that ink. He's got really big paws on that foot. Probably minimize some of that with the white again. Okay. See, there's a little black that spilled somewhere. What do we want to do for a background? My first thought was green, but he's got green in him. So I just want to do a puddly. My name's kind of upside down. Um, I just kind of want to do a puddly color. Should we do purple? Like a magenta pinky purple? Because that's the opposite of grass. Because what I'm thinking about is a pink. I'm thinking about maybe laying in some green and then doing some pink. Well, if I do black, then he's going to be back in the same condition with the... Plus, I want a watercolor. I want to... I don't want to, like, color the whole background. I want a very... Let me get a bright green. I think I know what I want. I did it on this bird print. I'm going to show you what I really liked. I did this, like, tap right in here. I just did all this tap, tap, tapping with one color and then came back in and tapped with the other. So I'm thinking that in some areas I'll take the green and just tap in some puddles of green. That would be our realistic color. I guess more green. Okay, and then I'm going to blot that. It's got to be bright. So now I'm going to come in and let the purple, it's like a bright pink magenta.
And I don't care if it kind of over bleeds into each other a little. In fact, I may just go over all of it. Because that was sort of the, that you do, uh, the purple scares you. Well, he's supposed to be bright. And I want to fade it out. Let me turn him. But this pink wasn't used in the body. I need more water just in the original picture I did a gray deck upside down because I don't want to get as much up here. I just want to have a light. Like he's sitting in the grass, but the grass is not the color that you expect. I think he's done. He runs the brushes. I will say that my watercolor brushes are the one brushes that I take care of. So it was called Fauvism, like faux, like like to fake something. I kind of is where I think the root. Here's how it's spelled. F-A-U-V-I-S-M. And the trend was to use very strong colors over a natural color. And Henry Matisse. So here he is. Now what I may do when he's dry is I may come back in and do some colored pencil work. And kind of work on like rounding his, like getting a little bit more of a feel for rounding on his face and not be as flat. Because I feel like he's flat in some areas, but I could come back in with some colored pencil after it's dry. I'll post a picture, if I do anything to it later, I'll post a picture on Twitter. I'm also going to put it on the um the, across the decades. This is not my only project. I actually have two projects for the 1900s. But when I saw this, I was like, ooh, I want to try that. Because I've always seen artwork like that that's really bright colors, but I didn't know where its origin came from. And this would be like Van Gogh would have kind of went in this. It was anti-impressionist. So they were going against the light colors that the Impressionists were using in the 1800s. And then where Picasso was changing the shape and distorting it with uh, Cubism. But they were basically trying to go against the trend of the Impressionist. Alright, I'm going to stop the recording and then I'll start another one in just a minute. I'm not leaving or going anywhere, but let me... Go ahead and stop this.